Mark. Made the very brave decision to go no hat today. Thank you all for checking out the latest short film that I just put out last week. If you haven't seen it yet, this video would probably be a lot more fun and more beneficial for you if you watch that first. Uh, but nonetheless, don't feel like you need to. This video is sponsored by Millinote. So I told people to leave the questions that they had about the short film in the comments section on the last video. Uh, majority of the questions revolved around the concept and the storyboarding uh, of the actual project itself. So that's what I want to spend most of today focusing on how to storyboard and how I kind of briefly came up with this concept. And once we work our way through that, I'll then touch on like uh, other questions that if you had a rapid fire, like budget, uh, where I got the voiceover, those kind of things. And just as a reminder to you all, I'm no expert. This YouTube channel is documentation of my journey to becoming a better filmmaker. So I'm still very young in my career. So I'm not sitting here saying, this is exactly how you storyboard, come up with concepts. This is just how things roll for me. It's for what works best for me. And you have to decide what works best for you. The video is titled, Run From Your Past. Uh, it's a satirical take on uh, a running commercial. There's a lot of different scenes, a lot of different characters. There's just kind of like this whole world and journey uh, through a longer period of time. So there are a lot of elements that needed to be ironed out. Mind you, with a very small crew and very, very, very limited resources. So the concept came pretty quickly. It came from, you know, thinking about what do running brands want people to think of when they think about their shoes? They want that person to not only grow as a runner, but grow as a person. And they probably want that person to think that their shoes are super comfortable and supportive and want of that person to be able to run in those shoes for a really long amount of time. And since the video that I was creating was a satirical take, uh, what I did was take those two ideas and over exaggerated them to like an extreme belief. So if your shoes are extremely comfortable and you can run for a long amount of times, what if it was like a Forrest Gump situation where you just never stopped running? And I thought maybe if you're running for an exaggerated period of time, maybe you're running away from something maybe you're trying to get away from your hometown. And I thought like, why would you wanna be running away from your ho hometown? Maybe something happened in your past uh, with people in your community that you just wanted to get away from. What would be so embarrassing that you wanted to get away from? Like instinctively, my brain went to right to publicly pooping your pants maybe in the middle of gym class. Now, let's be honest here, who, who didn't poop their pants in mid elementary, middle school, you know? I'm a 27 year old adult man and I almost pooped myself earlier this year. And it just like generally spiraled from there. And that's really how the concept came to be. So what we're gonna do, open up my story outline, my my main storyboard here. And of course I made that within Milnote. It's a desktop app that I use to organize uh, the pre-production, the planning of all my creative projects. It's a tool I started using about six months ago on a few projects and I literally have just integrated this into my brain. I love using Milano because it feels like there's absolutely zero limitations to what you can do within the interface. You know, you can draw, you can pretty much just like whatever comes to mind, make happen inside this board. So, so if you're looking at my full storyboard outline here, obviously what you're going to see is a finished product. And this didn't just happen overnight. This probably took me like 30 days to a month, like 30 days is a month, I guess but to really flesh this out, get it all organized, things were moved around, things were added, things were taken away, but it took a full month to get to what you're actually seeing right here. So instead of going block by block and, and taking an hour to walk you through this, what I wanna do is leave you with some higher level tips on how I got to this point and how I storyboard that hopefully you can use to integrate into your process. Tip number one, start with your beginning and start with your end. My video here starts an opening scene with a little girl <sighs> taking a deep breath, and then it ends with our main character, Mark, taking a deep breath at the end. And you know, there's a whole theme, thematic innocence and hope and all that through childhood kind of thing going on. So once I had my beginning and my end, I was then able to figure out how am I going to get from point A to point Z? That leads nicely into our second tip, which is to rid yourself of any and all distractions 
because you're going to need a lot of ideas. To get from point A to point Z in this story, there needs to be a lot of details, a lot of layers, a lot of ideas that are going to happen throughout to get you to that, that point. I literally lock myself in my office, get rid of my phone, don't let anything, anything in for at least like a two to three hour period. And I just write down any single idea that comes to mind because he poops himself in sixth grade gym class. Maybe I have his sixth grade teacher recall the memory. Maybe I actually shoot a flashback scene of that gym class and show you right then and there where Mark poops his pants when the ball falls on his stomach after he slips and misses after the kick. Maybe Mark got these running shoes as a gift from his mother because his mother is trying to put pressure on him to go out and be a normal boy. Doesn't matter if it's a good idea or a bad idea, just write down as much as you can and you can rearrange it and see how everything fits within your story. My third tip for storyboarding is to make sure that you incorporate a ton of visual elements into your board or whatever you're creating on. Traditionally, a lot of times when people are storyboarding, they sketch out scene by scene what they want to create, which is great. I personally don't like sketching out things scene by scene, especially since I'm young in my career. Uh, I still struggle with visualizing just in my brain how specific shots are going to look. So what I like to do is pull a ton of reference images from shows, movies, music videos. So for instance, I knew I needed a two shot interview of his parents discussing, you know, the situation that Mark was going through. And I was like having a hard time visualizing what that would look like. I knew I wanted it to feel natural and almost documentarian. I know I've seen a Canada Goose commercial um, on Vimeo a, a few months back and there was a two shot interview that I had seen that actually screenshotted and I used as a reference here. So I knew how I wanted to set up my interview for the parents. But there are instances where I'm just making little sketches if I don't have any references in mind that I can use. Like for here, when Mark stands into frame with all the laughing kids at him in the gym class flashback, you know, simply right here, just have four kids laughing, Mark standing up into frame uh, in the foreground. The sweet thing about Milno is that you can actually just make a sketch right in the actual interface itself right here. You can just go ahead, pull in a sketch, draw whatever you're, you're gonna draw. If you're working with people, say you're a director and you're working with a DP, which is easy for me because I'm directing and shooting, but if you're directing, you're working with someone separate who's shooting, it's nice to have a ton of visual references that you can show them. Uh, what is exactly in your mind. All right, then tip number four is to refine over time. Start wide, start messy, create your overarching outline, and then get into the nitty gritty of camera movements, specific shots within each scene. For example, like here I have my main core elements. So the car scene where the guy's driving along, slams on the brake, and Mark, you see Mark run in front of the windshield, uh, and he gets out of the car and he goes, Mark, then we obviously reveal Mark for the first time. So obviously I don't have the scene totally drawn out shot by shot here. So once I had everything like my master outline drawn up, then I go in and create shot lists for each scene. So I actually create a board within my board here. Here you're going to see the exact shot by shot, the six frames that I actually ended up shooting. First one, scene transitioning with a car whizzing by, then it goes to the wheel of that car and fade in the sound of the cabin of our character singing. And here's just a reference image of me from a video that I created, me singing in the car. Car mount, same kind of shot. That goes to him screaming, slamming on the brakes, and you see Mark run by left to right and cuts to him turning the music down. And then it cuts to a shot of the gimbal swooping around the car, seeing the guy looking as he scans across saying, Mark, just in total disbelief that he had just seen this nerdy Mark kid like going out doing something athletic. Another cool thing about Milno, you can just go ahead, take the, the pen tool and doodle on pre-existing 
reference images if it's not getting the total point across. So I had Michael B. Jordan saying, Mark, the showing the camera movement sweeping across. I have the location that we're gonna shoot in here, the song that the guy was singing, Yazoo, Only You. And then my guy, Mike Rose, who was our main character in that scene. Let me just show you how great this, this worked out. So a scene with the car whizzing by, boom. That's actually how it worked out. Car wheel. This is actually a scene from one of my videos, but so I knew exactly how I was going to get that interior car of the guy singing and slamming on the brakes. Boom, look at that. Mark running across the screen. Boom, look at that. Turning down the car radio. Boom, look at that. And then the guy hopping on the car. Little Steven Spielberg Jurassic Park moment where he takes his sunglasses off. Or was it his hat? I don't know. But he goes, Mark? Worked out perfectly, flawlessly. Start wide, get your main ideas, figure it out. Uh, and then once you, you feel good about your story, go ahead in there and really get the nitty gritty details of each scene uh, narrowed down. My last tip, tip number five, is to embrace change. What you have in your storyboard is awesome, right? It's, you plan it out, you put 100% effort in, that's all that you can do. When you actually go out and shoot, you know, it, it's the wild west. It's never going to go exactly how you expect it to go. The location is never gonna work out perfectly. The weather is never gonna work out perfectly, especially when you're rolling with a, a very, very small crew with limited resources. There's only so much you can control. Larger budgets, you're gonna be able to control more. Uh, facets of your project. You did your part in planning it and that's gonna get you as far as you possibly can. So that's generally how I storyboard. Again, it's not the right way, it's not the only way, but it's the way that works best for me. And that's what you need to decide for yourself what's going to work best for you. Now it's time to rapid fire some questions off. So a, a bunch of people asked for budget. So here's the budget breakdown that you can pause and hopefully look at. Can you see that? I don't know, just pause it. <laughs> uh, that money came directly from the money that I received from Milnote to sponsor uh, today's video, which was nice because I was gonna use Milnote anyway at this point. So I basically took whatever money they gave me and put into this project. So technically Milnote's a producer of this project as well. All right, so from John Rodriguez, do you contact Brooks after this or just throw it up online and hope they see it? Uh, no, I'm not making this for Brooks. I don't care if Brooks sees it. Spec work is solely to flex your creative muscle, practice, and make something that you really want to make. Is it totally on brand for Brooks? Probably not. Would they approve uh, a, a video like this of a kid pooping himself? Maybe not. Really what I'm doing with spec work is putting out in the world the work that I think I'm best at and the work that I want to be known for. and when brands and clients want that type of work, they're gonna come from me to make that happen. Great stuff, where'd you source your narr narrative voice from? Uh, the narrating voice um, was Tim Stevenson. I found him on Fiverr. This one is from Marcel or Markel. Quick question, how did you get those performances from young, such young actors? Uh, how do you prepare for literally directing a bunch of kids? It's tough, you just have to, pretty much kind of have the camera rolling at all times uh, and just capture what they're able to get because you're only going to get so much attention from little kids. Um, so when I went in the, the laugh at the kid, I would just, you know, basically do exactly what I wanted them to do right in front of their face. So if I wanted them to, to laugh, I'd be like, like, I wanted the little girl to laugh in her hand. So I did exactly that. I was like, hey, could you do this for me? Like. <laughs> And I had her, um, <laughs> I look like a serial killer when I do it, but it was cute when the little, <laughs> the little girl did it. Uh, then I had her like put her hand over her mouth and go, oh my God. And like her doing that in slow motion made for a really nice effect. So just have really good energy, keep the camera rolling and just give them the same energy back what you want them to give you. How'd you get that cinematic bloom glow? I used uh, one eighth of Black Promise, Tiffin Black Promise, screwed onto the front of my lens. How and when do you decide different aspect ratios? 
Uh, so most of it was shot 239 uh, to 1, which is the cinema scope. Just felt right for the story. It felt like a like a cool like narrative, and I wanted to have that feel. And then on the flashback scenes, I wanted to feel like a flashback, like it's confined and it's narrow. So I switched to a 4-3 aspect ratio for that. How do you come up with a pot twist at the start? It was brilliant. Uh, so I needed a way to catch your attention right away and much better way to build tension and catch your attention, like the possibility of a little girl getting drilled by a car. Uh, what helps you decide when a shot requires movement? Uh, I, I just always want my character to be motivating the movement of the camera. So that was a quick rapid fire. There was a lot more questions, but a lot of them were things I had touched on in past videos. And I didn't want to bore people by saying the same things over and over again, but it's really just thinking outside the box, getting creative, ridding yourself of the distractions, just doing the work, setting yourself up for success with a good plan going into the actual shoot itself. Thanks again to Melnote for sponsoring today's video and also uh, funding the, the actual project itself. So if you want to check them out yourself, go ahead and click the link down in my description below. Yeah, looking forward to the next one of these. I love doing these. Um, yeah, they're a ton of fun. I'm glad that you all, you're all enjoying it. So thank you. Uh, thanks for watching and I love you.